Um, th this other question came up with the, the other patients. So the, um, the one patient we had, the co-secretion of prolactin and growth hormone, it's actually relatively common, uh, 20 to 40% of adults, and actually is more frequent in childhood where the, uh, the co-secretion tumors are typically more invasive and, and microadenomas. And as Dr. Young commented on either earlier, there are a couple of possibilities here. We can have a mammosomatotroph cell where it's really the same cell that are co-secreting prolactin and growth hormone as would appear to be the case here. Uh, or there are actually separate cells which individually make growth hormone or prolactin. Um, or alternatively, uh, the, the tumor itself may cause some stock distortion and lead to hyperprolactinemia as an indirect uh, effect. And then just uh, uh, a little... Uh, uh, a little FYI information, the other most common co-secretor with acromegaly is a TSH-producing tumor, which are very unusual, and these cause acromegaly and central hypothyroidism. Um, and also, there are some studies that if you really get down to it and you do immunohistochemistry, um, as we saw in, in this case, you can actually find uh, some expression, at least at a tissue level, of really quite a broad range of other hormones in acromegalic tumors. And of course, we sometimes that's due to the um, just the quality of the immunohistochemistry, but, but some people have done in situ studies and showed that there's message there and, and, and so on. So there's a bit of plasticity that occurs in these, uh, in, in these tumors. But the relationship between the, um, the prolactin screening cell and the growth hormone screening cell is particularly strong. And one of the best examples I can give you uh, is during, during pregnancy where it's been demonstrated that many growth hormone screening cells actually transdifferentiate to become lactotrophs and they actually remain lactotrophs for the rest of the patient's life. So if you look at multiparous women at autopsy, they have more lactotroph cells than nulliparous women. So there clearly is a close relationship between the lactotroph and the somatotroph.